It's time once again for the monthly mashup for Space Dog Radio. In the month of June 2012, Space Dog Radio produced 25 broadcasts. How I'm going to condense that all into 15 minutes, I don't know, but I'll give it a good go. And now, it's time to mash up. Mash up. From Southwest Portland, Oregon, USA. From someplace over Los Cabos, Mexico, this is a Space Dog Radio Show. From someplace over Zimbabwe, Africa. From someplace over a small town in Germany. From someplace over Miami, Florida, USA, this is a Space Dog Radio Show. From someplace over Tokyo, Japan. I think I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I think so. Think so. Think so. Now, as you know, recently we've had a spate of zombie-like incidents. A man eating a face off another guy in Miami. Uh, there was another guy uh, eating organs in New York. But this one, this one takes it to a whole mid-range level. It's a brand, it's a brand, it's a brand new tool right here. <laughs> a chef uh, had his male genitals removed, um, and that was through a elective genital removal surgery. Um, he considers himself asexual. You notice the silence in the room. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Really? He chose to do this. So, so the chef had his male genitals removed and decided to cook and serve them for people to eat. I bet you it was good. Really? Right. He's I a chef. Did it taste right. like he's a chicken? Chef. He, knows, he's, he you, knows what he's doing. You know, here's my theory about eating people. You've had it before? I'm not yet, but I plan on it. Tastes like chicken? If, if, yeah. If, <laughs> oh, I think pork, actually. I think it would taste like pork. Now, I don't know what pork dick tastes like, but... I'm, it's, I'm it's assuming long again. Thin. Again, where is Evil Aaron when we really need her? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what you get when you aren't here. You get slammed. And it's, it's, it's strange because she can talk about that's right. pork dick. You too. Enjoy your fever. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Space Dog Radio. Mash up. From someplace over Washington, D.C., U.S.A., there's a behind-closed-doors negotiation going on with international companies called the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP. And uh, essentially, this uh, negotiation has been going on for years and would hand over a great deal of control to international companies doing business with the U.S. When it comes to the TPP, this is the sort of thing that it, it's bigger than just what we're talking about when it comes to the uh, laws, the international trade laws. Yes, these things can lead towards laws superseding international laws or even national laws. The treaty itself will supersede American laws within our borders. I just, I, I don't think that companies or other countries for that matter, but companies should not have the power to, to remove, because the laws are there to protect us, to protect the American citizen. So I don't think that companies should have the power to veto any laws or supersede any laws or anything like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Something else on the yeah, exactly. TPP, um, they limit how U.S. federal and state officials could regulate foreign firms operating within the U.S. boundaries with requirements to provide them greater rights than domestic firms. I'm, this is unbelievable. Extend the incentives for U.S. firms to offshore investment and jobs to lower-wage countries. Allow foreign firms to demand compensation for the cost of complying with U.S. financial or environmental regulations that apply equally to domestic and foreign firms. Look, we're sitting here in the treehouse, and even we know this is all right. fucked up. Yeah, no, how can these guys, 600 corporations, how, how is this even, like, going on? That's, you know, that's the question. It's, it's, it's capitalism. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it's, it's the little stuff like, oh, well, I don't want to say little, you know, but <laughs> compared to what's been going on on a world scale, this is the little stuff that gets... You know, shut, pushed under the right, mat right, right. that Nobody we don't know about. It, and it's going to sneak that's, up on you in the eight actual years stuff or that's so. Gonna, like, look, the, the, the Fast and Furious stuff, okay, Borgian died. Right. Got it. It right. sucks. Yeah. But it doesn't affect us as a nation. Right, right. Stuff like this is what's yeah. going to affect us as a nation. And yep. this is the stuff that needs to be brought to the front lines. Yep. Absolutely. And all that other stuff that they think is high profile, they need to sit there and really prioritize what's going on. Right. Because... 
Like baseball is not a priority. It, baseball <laughs> by, for sure is not a priority for our, for our legislative branch of government. Right. You know, but something like this is. Right. Radio. We're talking about the recent statement by President Obama uh, granting illegal aliens born here uh, a two two year reprieve and a possibility to uh, stay almost indefinitely. As a parent, I'm really concerned about my children. Mm-hmm. So, if somebody in government says, "Hey, your kids are now safe," and you've done that. Um, legislation or, or a law, pass a law, whatever you've done, and you make it seem like now the kids that I was very worried who go to school every day might get grabbed and deported without any kind of, I don't know. Right. Uh, that happened in happening. Alabama where so, okay. kids weren't going so, to school for a while. So you're telling me that this isn't political? This didn't happen it's, right well, now for see, a it's, reason? It, it really it it, sounds it's to not me, political. I knew shit it, about it's, this. It's not political because they're under 18. They if, can't no, vote. No, it's not. Hey, We're talking about no. their parents. Their parents can vote. And if you watch, yes. and if you watch okay. certain news outlets, <laughs> all right, they will show you tape from 2009, 2010, 2011, where the president is saying that he cannot make this possible by himself because there are laws on the books that dictate Okay. Okay. And now, five months before the election, he comes out and does it. This is wait, a wait, purely, wait, 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 wait. this is a purely no, political no, driven it, move. Yes. Dude, trust Garner me, it, 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 it totally vote. sounds like it. But not, but now that I'm thinking about it, if the kids are illegal, if the kids are considered uh, illegal because immigrants, you don't have to show, then the parents are definitely illegal. You don't have to show illegal. proof of residency or anything to register to vote. From someplace over St. Louis, Missouri, this is the Space Doug Radio Show. Today we're talking about a small little company that uh, uh, makes about $10.5 billion and has 27,600 employees. The name of the company is Monsanto and is considered the mother of agriculture biotechnology, but it's also called a mother of something else by a lot of lawyers. Um, the latest controversy was with their product called Roundup, and Roundup is uh, was proved to be toxic on crops and uh, continues to be uh, sold around the world and used by many countries. Now, it's said that Monsanto seeds account for uh, are in, related to products of about 95% of American consumers. The question is, um, are these altered seeds uh, worth protecting the consumer against? Do we care about this? Peace dog radio. <laughs> but anyways, uh, today's subject, we're talking about drones, and it's been in the news quite a bit. Drones are uh, are on the uh, foreign channels a lot. We're, we're sending drones into Pakistan. We're sending drones into Africa, and uh, it's been all across the news, but I don't think people really know the importance of how drone technology has grown within the last couple of years, and with the advent of the Afghanistan fight going on. Space Dog Radio. From someplace over Newstead, New York, USA, this is a Space Dog on Space Dog Radio, along with Randall the Handle. What's up, Brett? How you doing? The Hitman's on board. Hello, folks. It's the Hitman coming at you. Loaded up and ready to fire. Also, Evil Aaron is flying along with us. Ah! (laughs) Authorities in western New York say a 20-year-old man thought he was sleeping on his friend's couch when the troopers woke him up over the weekend. Turns out uh, the guy was off by about 20 miles. State police say a homeowner in rural Erie County town of Newstead woke up around 4.30 a.m. Saturday and found a stranger sleeping on his couch. Is What is one of the most uh, uh, hilarious things you've ever done under the influence Evil Aaron? Why are you coming to me? Okay, here's, here's the thing. We actually, we talked about this at the bar. I That's was weird. blacked out, drunk, right? Blacked out, don't remember, pretty sure I've done some crazy shit, end of story. <laughs> that was literally how she sold it. Nicely. Like, what about? She was like, nicely uh, things edited. happened, nothing. Nothing, done. yeah. The no one's it. No the rest of it, you can catch on our X rated. That's right. <laughs> um, Space yeah. Dog Radio XXX. <laughs> evil XXX. The evil, the evil doggy station. Yeah. <laughs> We all know Walla Walla, Washington is famous for its onions and now famous for its wines. As a matter of fact, it is the epicenter for Pacific Northwest wine making. But there's more to Walla Walla than onions and wine. There's also hot poop. Walla Walla, Washington on 210 East Main sits a record shop called Hot Poop, run by Jim McGuinn. The record store Hot Poop 
is the oldest independent record store in the entire state of Washington. We caught up with Jim McGuinn, the owner of Hot Poop. Here's Jim McGuinn. It's a pun for pop music. Pop music turns to poop. I used to say within 90 days. Sometimes now it's like nine minutes. You know, I mean, you really want it, <laughs> right. and then nobody cares at all. <laughs> From studio number four, Space Dog Radio, this is a Space Dog along with the crew, Randall Handel. What's up, birthday? You doing? The Hitman. Hello, folks, it's the Hitman. Brrrah, coming at you. And Evil Aaron is joining us today. Monkey one. Our special guest for the Spank Monkey Happy Hour on the Space Dog Radio Show is an entrepreneur, designer, and troublemaker extraordinaire, Ron Hansen. Welcome back. Hello. Um, we've reconfigured the flight deck here in the studio um, because we've been waiting for something since last year. It's called Spank. Monkey wine. So there's a guy, I won't say his name, but there's a guy in Cincinnati accused of having sex with a teddy bear for the fourth time in the past two years, according to the smoking gun. What is up with this dude? Is this a stuffed animal? He's, a ra- he's arrested. He's arrested Wednesday uh, after employees at a health clinic saw him masturbating with a teddy bear in an alley, according to a police report. Uh, you know, okay, so uh, three previous convictions for either public indecency or disorder conduct with a teddy bear the latest time uh, he was hit with a disorderly conduct charge Randall Hannah you're you're busting <laughs> I've had plenty. you gotta come to space dog radio for this kind of culture <laughs> you too can reach this prime demographic <laughs> I've had plenty of girls say like let's do it out in public and it, it seems um, with a teddy bear no, no. And they well, said, holy crap. Like, At least like, you're better than my teddy bear. <laughs> no, they're like, they're like, hey, let's do it. It's dangerous. It's scary. Ooh, it's, it's, uh, we're out in the public. We might get caught and all this stuff. I've never had my teddy bear say that to me. <laughs> Well, never. I, I don't have to like, say anything. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to masturbate. Yeah, I don't want to say better than what I've heard. Yeah, but you know, whatever. It's cool. Just because we throw the word teddy bear in there doesn't mean anything more than the fact that this guy likes masturbating in public. Who cares what he did it with? Cabbage. <laughs> Fucking, he's still in public. So that's like really disgusting. You shouldn't be masturbating in public. Yeah, do no, it at home. Like, do it. Hey, trying to build fuck a your case teddy to be bear. Able to fuck apply your teddy for bear. All you want. <laughs> Probably right. He probably just doesn't want to work anymore, so I'm just gonna masturbate in public yeah. until the government says, yeah, you know what? They're gonna pay me to just leave, keep me out of the public yeah, eye. No, that actually might true. be true, but that, that'll work. I don't know. The guy sounds disturbed. The guy, I mean, the guy There's sounds sexy. Issue. Ooh, uh, we got a special guest here. G <laughs> <laughs> smooth. G <Jay> smooth. <laughs> This is G-Smooth, Sam Bradford sucks. Oh, <laughs> good call, good call. G-Smooth, just happy to be here. And special guest here, G-Smooth. Go Bengals! <laughs> <laughs> and we got a special guest flying along with us, G-Smooth. G-Smooth, Mexican can't speak Spanish. <laughs> Morgana, welcome back to Space Dog Radio. Thank you for joining us yet again. Hello, my friend, and hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here again on Space Talk Radio. Let me ask you this. Given all the craziness going on in the world, do you think it'd be better if it were mandatory for all world leaders to at least meditate once a day to chill out? Uh, Maybe this would be a great idea. Space Talk Radio is pleased to welcome back the talented and lovely Morgana. (laughs) 